Hi guys, welcome to uh, another episode of Elite Magic Unboxings. Uh, mostly we'll be looking at playing cards and the differences in different brands and types of playing cards. Uh, also another few maybe magic props thrown in. I think we're we'll doing a uh, chop episode comparing different you know, brands, types of chop cup and the uh, pros and cons of those in the future episode. But mainly we'll be playing cards. I thought to start off the first proper episode, I'll look at the basics of cards for both magicians and poker players red and uh, red and blue bicycle cards actually red and blue bicycle cards your standard pack it costs about three dollars each um, for the price pretty good quality um, when you just open them up they've got a nice finish they're like the standard uh, air cushion finish and they fan really nicely and spring really nicely um, straight out the pack the edges are normally really nice and smooth when you get them out of the box. Now and again you'll come across uh, a batch or a deck where the edges are a little bit rough and this uh, stops you, say, I don't know, barrel shuffling straight out the box. But if you just break them in a little bit, as if you would new guitar strings, then they'll barrow pretty easily after a few workings in because you know, generally they're good quality. Now, um, Different people prefer red and blue depending on what they're using them for and there's different reasons. I'll go into the reasons people like red or blue depending on what in a little bit. But uh, first up, just a few different variations of bicycle cards. Um, you can get your regular decks like these. There's also bicycle seconds. I'm not sure if they're on the market anymore. I have to check, but I used to buy them quite a lot. They come in a slightly different looking box and they're about half the price, they're cheaper, they're only about $1.50 a pack. Uh, a lot of musicians I knew used to buy them in bulk and use them as practice cards, you know, so when you're sitting there watching a movie or watching TV or whatever, you can sit there and practice your your false shuffles, you know, or your or your deals and you're not you're not wearing out or dirtying your your regular cards. They made good practice cards. The only real thing with them was sometimes the Printing on the back design would be off, would be a little bit wonky or whatever, or you know, things like that. Normally, there wasn't many mistakes in the front, now and again, they'll be a little bit wonky, but it was. And the edges were rough, that's the thing. When you took them out of the box, a lot of time the edges were very rough, but they made good practice cards. You can also get um, Gold Seal or Bicycle Professional. Now, those I think the stock is slightly thicker that they're printed on, but um, also the edges are different when you first take them out of the pack. The edges are always smooth, and if you look at them, you can even see it. The edges were slightly beveled, as if they'd been like you know die cut or press cut or whatever they did, and they would they would like farrow perfect out the box every time. Um, they were about four or five dollars a pack, maybe a bit more. I bought a couple of those, and yeah, the quality was a bit better. But for for the price, I just stuck with regular red and blue at three dollars a pack, and you don't really notice a difference once you've worked the cards in now. The reason some people prefer red and blue is a few different reasons. A lot of gaff cards you buy, um, and when I say gaff cards, I don't mean especially printed cards. I mean gaff cards like cigarette through card, hollow, um, you know, moving hole effects or effects where the back design changes or or moves or say the card rises. A lot of them are done on blue stock bicycle card, and I think there's a few different reasons um, for that. Um, I think the blue hides the gaff a little bit better. So I had cigarette through card in both red and blue, and I found that after a while, on the red card, the gimmick would start to sort of show. You know that the red ink was uh, flaking off, or whatever. Where on the blue, it didn't seem to happen. Now, not saying the blue ink is stronger than the red ink, but one thing is that the the blue back design in general seems to hide the the gimmicks in the card a little bit better than the red, maybe because it's just a darker color, color and the contrast in the blue and white sort of hides that. We're on the red because it's lighter and I think maybe the ink is slightly more transparent than the blue that it doesn't hide the, the gap as well. So a lot of highly gimmicked cards, say like hollow or whatever, come in blue. Now, uh, I do a lot of my effects in blue. In fact, I use my invisible deck in a blue deck just because I think that the what was yeah the face down card in the face up deck shows up a little bit better because it's blue against the white uh, rather than the red against the white which is a paler color and doesn't sort of 
pop out as much as when it's in blue. But I do do a few routines that do for red cards, and the reason why some people prefer red cards for certain routines is <clears throat> signatures show up better on the red back. So you've got a black signature on the back, say for a torn and restored card like Daniel Garcia's torn, or um, why well, do a version of an anniversary waltz cross with ambitious card where two signatures end up on the same card? And again, the the signature on the back shows up really nicely on the red ink compared to you know black ink on the blue black ink on the red shows up a lot nicer and the audience can see it so if you're doing you know that's a torn by Andrew Garcia you've got signature they can see it really clearly and that's why a lot of magicians use red cards for a lot of routines just in case people need to sign the signature on the back or whatever it just shows up really clearly um, there's no difference obviously in the quality of red and blue um, print on the same stock and the same ink like I said the blue maybe is a little the blue ink is a little bit stronger than the red ink I don't know but um, for your everyday use both poker and magic in general I, you know three dollars a pack you can't beat them I don't go for the the four dollar gold silver special cards the only thing I would say is get a card clip now this is a black Joe Pauper card clip they're about thirty five dollars in here, and you can see they hold them pretty tightly. I have a red mandolin deck, which is a variant on the bicycle deck. Um, I'll go over that another time. Same back, slightly changed because uh, bicycle stock people, they changed the rules and people printing gaff cards. And when I say gaff, this time I mean like marked cards or ones where the, the back design has been altered, say Twilight Angels, where the angels move around. You've got an angel here and here, and things move around. Bicycle changed the rules on that, so people created the mandolin deck to print special cards. So most marked decks or pre-printed marked decks come in mandolin now. Now, you can get cheaper card clips in the Joe Pulp one, but like you saw, it holds it really tight. And these definitely extend the life of your cards by quite a lot. It keeps them flat, um, stops them warping, and as you can see, it's very hot here. These cards have already started to warp a little bit. It's like 38, 40 degrees, and the cards are already warping them nice and flat when they're in the box it's got constant pressure it's been machined and it has this uh, little bevel here that actually you know keeps constant pressure on the cards and keeps them flat the five ten dollar metal ones you get and um, they might protect the cards and stop them bending in your back pocket and protect the box and you know generally keep them in a little bit better condition but they don't extend the life as much as I say it's like this is more like a mini card press and it really keeps constant pressure on the cards and keeps them nice and flat and for $35, it seems expensive for a bit of metal, but you'll save that in a week, in a couple of months of you buying, you know, bricks of cards. Um, you'll, you'll save that $35 pretty soon buying one of these. So definitely, any cards you buy from bicycle up to exotic decks, get a card clip. Now, 